If you love the drag content and all the exposed, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now and also turn your notifications on. People did not like when it was press week and you showed up to like the build series and stuff out of drag. Yeah, yeah. What led you to do that? And why do you think people took such a strong opinion about you not being in drag? I think, I, well, to be completely honest with you, when people watch the show, they feel they own us. They feel that they can tell us what to wear, what to do, what to say, all this bullshit. And that was my way of saying, no, without Jeremy, there would never, ever be a Fifi. And I own everything I create in this world. And you're not going to take that away from me. Um, so I wanted to, I, I love being Jeremy. I, I love it. I fucking hate this shit right now. <laughs> no, but I just see me and I wanted to go myself. See, the, the members of, like, the cats, which I don't know if anybody went to that premiere, but they didn't show up to the premiere as cats. You know what I mean? Like, what? so it should be okay to just be yourself. That's a good point. I mean, I think that that's a lot of times what people end up forgetting. And people also forget that you guys are human and you guys yeah. are somebody out of drag. Yeah. And I think that that's a big problem with the fan base, especially now. Like, I, like, as this keeps growing and the audience keeps expanding, it's just like, I feel like you girls get so much more hate than... Yeah, Years ago. because the, because fans and, and I'm so happy that fans enjoy watching the show and, and you know and they support everybody. But it gets to the point to where they a lot of them feel like they own everything, including our creative direction with our characters. And and you don't, you know what I mean. So and I think it's really important that we put our foot down and we stand up for, you know, what we believe in. And I believe in myself. Yeah, and I think that you've done a really good job of showing who you are after the whole thing. I think that yeah. that's been good, and I think that you're showing who Jeremy is. Like at the end of the day, like you had two stints on television and now you're Jeremy. Like, you know, you yeah. have your moment and then now you can kind of go with it. Yeah, I agree. And I'm glad, I'm really, it actually feels really good. I, I do like my meet and greets or when I'm on stage or anything and people say Jeremy. I think that's so cool because I don't want to be known and remembered for my character. I want to be known as Jeremy the artist and Fifi happened to be one of those characters. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's actually a good yeah. way of looking at it. I didn't look at that way before. Like, Fifi's a character of Jeremy, and you can have... Yeah, it's a part of, Yeah, like, I want people to be like, you know what? He did 365 Days of Drag. His Harry Potter stuff. He did Fifi O'Hara. You know, stuff like that. That's what I want it to be known as, so... And I think it's, go it's absolutely going in the, right, in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. Now, back to All Stars. There was a fan question that I really... I'm going to read this to you because I could not find any information about this, and I don't know if it's Thanks. just a rumor or... Okay. <clears throat> what was it like being in All Stars 2 with Roxy since you both dated and you had a few? <laughs> Did you date Roxy Andrews? We never... We never... We never date... Like, we were never boyfriends. We... <laughs> Uh, we uh, we talked, yes. We definitely did talk, but that was it. There was no no sexual relations, <laughs> nothing like that happened. So, but when we were there, like, they really did try to make that a storyline, and like they would see like us going back and forth, and everybody there knew what was going like our past. So they would sit there and be like, "Oh, is there something going on between you two? And we're like, "Nah, bitch. I'm just like trying to do my makeup. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're just talking." So, but you know, they're nothing ever happened and we were not um we were never boyfriends the spark never ignited never no no you know what it is because she i'm i'm such a big mouth and she's such a big mouth like she has to be in control i have to be in control i don't think that would work like it just i don't maybe it would maybe that'd be some great sex I don't know, <laughs> but it never worked now speaking of roxy were you at all disappointed that she ended up getting a redemption arc in uh, all stars 2 and you did not no, Roxy's my friend. I did. I, 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 I was. I didn't. I was happy to see her succeed. It was so stupid to hear like the audience going off about her and, and and all this bullshit. But to be there with her, I it was just fun. I had so much fun with Roxy, and especially like the day I got eliminated, I knew I was going home, and um, she was so worried that she was going home. And I remember being backstage with her, and like we have such good memories. Um, of just me being like, girl, I'm going home looking like this. Like, you still look beautiful. And like, and she's like, no, girl, I'm not. And I was like, no, you're going to be fine. And I, just, I really do love Roxy. And I'm happy that people love her, love her in return. That's good. Yeah. Do you, looking back on your experience of All Stars 2, did you think the whole time, did you know at all that you were going to have a villain story arc? Or did you 
was there a moment that it clicked with you that like, hey, something is changing? Oh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, so the moment I got there, everybody was just like hugs and kisses. And you know, that's how TV goes. It's, it's, it's what it is. But then getting there and doing, so you have to film and then on the weekends you do your confessionals. And it wasn't until getting into my confessionals and Jacqueline was my story producer at the time. She did not like, a, she did not like a single response that I said. And she kept saying, no, you got to be truthful. You got to be truthful. And I was like, what do you mean you got to be, I'm telling you what I feel. And the moment she kept trying to push me to say what she wanted is when I realized like, oh, you don't, you don't want me to be nice. You don't want me to be who I actually am for you. I get it. And that's when I, we started butting heads on, on there. And um, I, I refused to give her those sound bites that she wanted. I just wouldn't do it. Do you think that that retaliation and kind of like not saying what they wanted led to you getting eliminated? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And you know what? I'm glad I left. I, it was not fun. I, I refuse to put my, I do this thing and I tell this thing and like, I tell this to all my fans and any of my supporters, like you deserve to be in a circle surrounded by people that build you up and make you feel good. And the moment that is like hindered or there's somebody negative in there, you need to remove that. And for me, that was the producers in the show. It, I just felt like shit. I felt like I was trying to, you know, I felt like Donkey Kong, you know, I was just trying to run up the ladders and then the producers are Donkey Kong throwing barrels at me every time. And it just was like exhausting. So I, I'm, I'm happy I left. I am so fucking happy that I did not win. <laughs> <laughs> did you, do you, do you feel the same way that Adora felt when she left early? I think I need to go. I'm leaving RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 2. I feel like shit. I completely get why Adore left. And you know what? And I kind of felt bad because I was the one that held Adore's hand when she left. And I was like, you are not leaving. Like, you're going to stick this through. I told her to, um, like, just sleep it off that night. If you feel bad tomorrow when we film the next episode, then do what you got to do. But at least just think about it and everything. And in that moment, I get it. I fucking get it. <laughs> because it just makes you feel like shit. We, we spent all these years touring and building up our brand and our fan base and this positive circle for us to just go back on TV and get it ripped down to tell us that we're nothing again. You know what I mean? And it's just, it, that's horrible. It's, it's not a good feeling. And I think that no. at, the, at the end of the day too, like you can kind of see that. You can kind of see your, your energy. You can see Adore's energy on there that like there, there was yeah. a turning point. Yeah, it's just, I think that's sad. And I think I, people got mad at Adore. And you know what? Fuck, th those aren't real fans. Those are not real fans of Adore if they got mad. At, um, if, if, if you're a real fan of somebody, you would applaud that person for taking them out of that, that situation that made them feel uncomfortable. Exactly. Yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, that's all it comes down to. And then yeah. you, I know that you, you didn't go to the reunion. <laughs> First one, yay! First one, um, <laughs> Was, was there a reason why you decided not to go? Yeah. Um, yeah, because I, they can't use words against me if I'm not there. You know what I mean? And um, I was not going there from a place of love. I was ready to cuss Rue out. I was ready to cuss the producers out. I was ready to just go off on Alyssa. Like, there was so much hate in my heart. Like, I, it wouldn't have gone well. And for me, it was the best thing to do to just not show up. Just... Just don't give them what they want because I can say whatever the fuck I want to say to RuPaul, but it, it's to, to the fans, it will never show as good. It will never, whether RuPaul was right or wrong, it will it never show as anything positive for me. And the, and the producers would never allow that to happen. So I just decided I'm better than this. I don't need to put myself through it. <laughs>